As one of the world's oldest and largest fair trade organizations, 10,000 Villages has spent more than 60 years cultivating trading relationships in which artisans receive a fair price for their work and consumers have access to distinctive handcrafted items. They seek to establish long-term buying relationships in places where skilled artisans are either under or unemployed and in which they lack other opportunities for income. Here in Portland, Oregon, there's a nonprofit fair trade store called The Banyan Tree, which has recently been bringing more fair trade opportunities to local shoppers than ever before. Casey Eisenberg has the report. Fair trade is about trade justice. And we don't choose where we are born or where we live. Yeah, none of us choose our parents, none of us choose our race, none of us choose the, the, the livelihoods that we got when we were born. You're just born. And some people are lucky to be born in America or Canada or the UK and many other countries. And some people end up in Africa. I'm Casey Eisenberg. Today we'll be touring the Banyan Tree, a fair trade store located in the Mercy Corps headquarters in Portland's Old Town District, right next to the Saturday Market. Today we'll be meeting with Lois Gerhardt, the manager of the Banyan Tree. Hi Lois. Hi Casey, welcome. Let me show you our store. Thank you. The Banyan Tree is a store whose mission is to bring artisan-made goods from developing countries to the market that we have here in Portland. The things in this store are quite unique and um, one thing that we offer is things that you can't buy many other places. Also, it gives a person who wants to buy a gift but also wants to make a statement with the way that they purchase that gift. It gives them the opportunity to do both of those things. Portlanders are extremely receptive. This is a great, great fair trade town because it all fits in with being um, concerned about the environment and concerned about the world around you. Yes, Portland is a great market for fair trade. How do your customers know that the products that they're purchasing are really produced according to these standards? Um, that's a very good question. There is a uh, governing board that certifies all of the people that we buy our merchandise from and we um, we have to trust them they're a uh, third party certification board and so um, other than traveling to these places and checking it out ourselves which I would be willing to do <laughs> um, that's really what we can do is is um, make sure that everything that we buy is from a fair trade organization. There are some tenets of fair trade and one of them is that the artisans need to belong to co-ops and these co-ops determine what their price is going to be for the items. The idea of working with co-ops as opposed to a single artisan is something that's very important to, to fair trade. Prokriti, which is called Nature in Bangla, is an independent organization which owns eight enterprises. It is uh, looking after all the matters related to administration, design, and marketing. We have got uh, a project called Kea Palm Project. Kea is a local seagrass found in riverbed and palm. If we go and visit that project, talk to the women, they smile, they enjoy talking, and also from their earnings, they have either repaired their house or they could have started actually sending their children to schools. And the most important part is the confidence they have grown and the honor in the society. Kik is a fair trade organization. Kik itself is situated in a place called Kibwe, which is actually the second largest market area in East and Central Africa. What a Kik artisan would earn from, from the work they are doing would be twice what many teachers and policemen would earn. And it's a cleaner environment, there's less banging and clanging, there's more, there's more focus on health and working conditions, there's more fun. And then the destructive competition you see in the Juakali, 
which means hot sun in Swahili is not there. A lot of it is recycled stuff. The metal we use like for the dancing girl earrings would come from old mortars that have ground to a halt. It would come from soda cans and other food cans that would be collected from Kisumu. Another tenet of fair trade is that um, women are are, it is necessary for women to be involved in the democracy. Um, many artisan groups re require that there be 50-50 men and women in their um, um, leadership roles. Um, I was just at a fair trade conference and there were um, artisans from coffee growing companies, or coffee growing countries, excuse me, and um, only one was a man, the rest were women, and I thought that was very interesting. But at any rate, um, gender equality is very important. Um, which leads me to my next uh, tenet of fair trade, which is that we try to help the poorest of the poor. And our background is with 10,000 Villages, and one of the things that 10,000 Villages has done um, is they seek out people who would not be able to sell their items anywhere else. And oftentimes that's because it's a, a woman produced item or a woman owned cooperative or um, for whatever reason, um, it's, it's about women. And so um, for many years, 10,000 Villages has um, supported women in that way. We um, represent 38 developing countries. Um, the countries that we represent the most right now are India, um, Central America, Haiti, and Nepal. So um, within those 38 countries, there are, depending on the times, there are focuses, and definitely Haiti is a focus of ours right now. Casey, I want to talk to you about one of our most um, interesting items. It's the Haitian recycled drum art. Um, there are oil drums that are 55 gallon drums that um, are discarded when they're not used any longer and a man in Haiti in the 50s um, came up with a way to flatten the drum and carve out a piece of art from it. One of my favorites is this new one. It's a candle holder and it's a house and I just think it's so cute. Um, but what, I just think it's a great example of something that is unique and then something that is recycled and then something that helps, as we all know, Haiti needs as much help as we can give them. The wood furniture that we're surrounded with right here in this room is from Indonesia. There is a Portland-based company named Tropical Salvage and they um, produce this furniture in Indonesia from salvaged wood. They use about 40 different woods. Here's an example of um, a large piece of wood that's being pulled out of the earth. Um, this is an entombed piece of wood and they're using a pulley system that they've um, devised themselves to, to bring this out of the earth and then um, is lumbered and made into some of the um, furniture that you see here. So, would you like to know what is our best-selling item and has been for many years? It's the Galimoto. What is a Galimoto? It's a sweet, whimsical toy. Let me show you how it works. You simply push it and away it goes. And uh, what makes the Galimoto unique to me is that it's made from um, items that are found items. Hangers, which they use wire now, they started using hangers and scraps um, from a clothing factory. So from nothing has come our best-selling item. Where are these made? These are from Kenya. I just think it's such a neat story. Another tenet of fair trade that I didn't mention is that we respect the artisans' talent and taste for, for what they think is beautiful. My name Athanas Matoke Sure. Our quality is different from other carvings because they sometimes they bring some designers here. We work together with them. We can say you know, is like our father. I think it's like around 15 years. I'm still with Ondugo. Ondugo is supporting us. 
for this marketing. If they stop, they can kill many people. We are carrying other people from our behind, uh, the covers, uh, the quarry town there, the contract people for carrying stones, not only that, sandpapering, Mama. Eh? Papering, those women, eh? they are depending on us. You get one person, but from behind, they are a very big jail. This is the process, and it's great if, if you can make a choice for fair trade, it really makes a difference. Maybe pick some areas that um, you feel stronger about, that your items need to be fair trade, as opposed to maybe school supplies or something like that. Start with the groceries, start with your coffee, start with um, chocolate. Chocolate is a great place to start. Um, the things that I'm understanding about where chocolate comes from, if there's anything um, that should be fair trade, it's chocolate. Lois, thank you so much for inviting us into the Banyan Tree today and giving us an introduction to what your organization is all about. Thanks, Casey. It was great having you here. I'm Casey Eisenberg, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today. <laughs> Bandai Ati <laughs>